Welcome back to another Collider video recap of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm Will Link, and we are going to be breaking down the latest episode, 4,722 hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the episode. Not how long we're going no, to be talking about. That's how long today the show is going to be. <laughs> uh, so uh, with me, as always, to my left. Hi, I'm Aaron Fitton. That's it. <laughs> And uh, I am Michael Medina, <laughs> and I am definitely crazy about a shark-dressed man. <laughs> I'm Josh McCuga. Uh, unfortunately, shark-dressed man did not make it on tonight's episode. No, but we're waiting. In the future, he could be here. There's still hope. There's still hope. If you couldn't tell, much like the astronauts stranded on that planet, we've all gone a little crazy yes, here yeah, yeah. for watching 4,722 hours. Yes. Um. I know, I keep thinking of the song from Rent 2. So, this has been, leading up to this all week, this has been a very hyped episode. Yep. This has been a very, you know, talked about, we're finally going to see what happens with Jenna and everything. Uh, and, and Did you just call her Jenna? Jenna? Gemma. Gemma. Oh, my God. <laughs> They're going to kill me. Right. I'm already screwed. Gemma jar. Gemma jar. Put it in. No, jar. Because we can't do a Sky Daisy thing in this yes, episode, yeah. that's what it's going to be. Jenna, Gemma. Um, but, you know, building up to this, we knew it was going to be mostly about her. In fact, it was all about her. Yeah. And, you know, this is a big risk-taking move for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They haven't done a really one-character-centric episode before. Uh, so, you know, it was either going to be like the greatest episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ever or, you know, maybe not the greatest <laughs> episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ever. Uh, how do you guys think, uh, Josh, some of you, how do you, how do you think this uh, did it live up to the hype? Well, you know, right before we kind of went to air uh we were talking about standalone episodes in shows in general um and i think i, I sometimes really like them uh but i don't know there was something about this i think uh, honestly i think for me it was the actual tone of the planet color wise right like it started messing with my eyes it was like watching something totally in sepia tone like this planet was all sepia tone and Except it started it wasn't it was in blue it was blue i know what i mean <laughs> it was a blue sepia it was a bleepia oh, okay a bleepia. blue sepia sure. tone it, but it, it, on the flip side of that, I, I really kind of fell in love with Gemma in this episode. Yeah. She was so good. She, she, you know, she meets this guy and she figures out where the portals are going to be, which is beyond me, how she kind of does that. Or, you know, she takes it upon herself to really figure this out and put hope back in this astronauts fan. She carried this episode. This is like Will Smith and Kate what was the movie where he was on the New York with the dog. Uh, oh, I am I'm legend. legend. Oh, I'm Where is your, it's just your, it's your, this is your episode. You got to go with it. And I thought she did a kick-ass job. Also, Tones of the Martian a yeah. lot in this. I mean, that's an that's easy that's one. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, because I saw uh, The Martian, which was really good. Um, I really liked this. I really love the, uh, the, the relationship between her and Will. I mean, props to that guy for showing mad restraint 14 years without getting laid. And he's like being very gentlemanly to her. Yeah, it's but not like, it, you know, Rosie look, O'Donnell showed up on the planet. It's freaking Oh my jammer. God, you're rude. Yeah. So the look and the feel and the music um, on this episode was like nothing. You're so rude. Um, what? It was like nothing that the agency of has ever done before. Oh my God. What? How am I? I I'm not saying anything. He's the one who has it. Because I'm just, those guys are cracking me up right now. Um, maybe now is the perfect time to ask you your thoughts on the episode. Um, I Sorry, like Aaron. the episode. You wouldn't get r with Rosie O'Donnell. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, I would. I would. It would be a lot more difficult to get to work with Rosie O'Donnell than it would be to restrain myself with oh Gemma. God, so well, what are we saying about this? Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> what are they saying about Will? Are we saying any man left alone 14 years is going to turn into like some crazed rapist? Is that <laughs> what we're saying? I'm just saying being isolated on a planet that long would have effects on me. Your standards? If I, you know, I would, if I found I'm like, oh Jesus, you're real? Let's do this. I smell a lot, but it doesn't matter. Like my strength, I don't know. Fellas, but if you're wondering how to get with Aaron, <laughs> get yourself stranded on a planet and then find a portal years. and then get her sent over there. Um, you're in. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, come on. Did that not cross anyone else's mind? Well, I, I mean, I'm also, <laughs> the lack of sun for 14 years um, and being D. under, like, I feel like that would also make a man less stamina. 
I don't know. Okay, well, let's let Mike. Let's this get has this. nothing to Not do with it. Not that it needed. He needed to be rapey, but I would have liked, like, if sh- they shook his hand, like, if they shook hands, that he would have been like, like this. Like, the touch of like, a woman. Like, oh, okay, know. fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. You're like sixteen. <laughs> well, listen. Rude. I mean, dude, fourteen years. Could you hand? What would you? What do you think you would? How would you react? Fourteen years. A, a woman. Yeah. Mike, tell us how you rape someone. Like this one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks. You don't need hey, a rape. Thanks for thanks for having me on the show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what, what did you think of the episode overall? Let's get. Um, we haven't gotten your Jesus thoughts. Guys. Yeah, I, I like this episode. I thought it was really well done. I'm with you. I I'm thought Gemma was rape, fantastic, guys. All right. No, we know. We know. We know. We know. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I'm with you. I'm with you about Gemma. I thought she was fantastic in this episode. Really cared the episode. Now. Back to the whole Will thing, I think that was my issue. I, I don't think it was so much the fact that he just didn't want the touch of a woman. I just think it was bad writing. I was not a big fan. I think he was very one-dimensional of a character. He was pretty dull. I think of anything, this is just my opinion. I think he hurt the episode. I think I would have uh, liked the episode more if it was just Gemma, or maybe if they would have found a character who would have created some some more, I don't know, it, it, he was just dull to me. I felt really? nothing, no connection with him. I think he was just there. I like that it's, I like the relationship that ended up building between them. However, I'm kind of with you. When he first showed up, I was a little disappointed that it wasn't just, that it wasn't the Martian, that it wasn't that she was completely alone. It was a whole like, oh, you know, I'm just a rogue pilot. I was an astronaut. I'm not really the like the He was the muscle of the astronauts. He was sent there with like a weapon. It's like, you got to take care of these other astronauts. How many guys have we seen like this in film and TV? When you look at like Jurassic uh, World, for example, with Chris Pratt's character, just like a guy's guy. You know, it's like, like, oh, I would have preferred something else. uh, Like, are you sending astronauts to this foreign planet? Planet, knowing full well that they don't get along, so you need some muscle there to make sure things get done. <laughs> well, like, that I, doesn't make a ton of sense. I to assumed me. he was sent there because they didn't know what was going to be on the yeah. other side, and okay. the muscle might have been to protect them from the evil that was killing them. So, great job, Will. Yeah, You're but they're all, <laughs> I mean, you would think, okay, you could train a really smart, sciencey astronaut to go with them and also carry a gun and protect them. Like, you don't have to send Rob Gronkowski over there with him, like, I'll smash my alien come to your astronaut. You know, you know, I disagree. I really liked him, and maybe, like, the what you were getting off of him was because he was, a, like, left there for 14 years without any, without talking to anybody. And also, he's, like, very awkward, that there is a human person, that she is female, and he doesn't know how to act anymore socially. I don't know. I just felt that he was missing something. There was something about him. I, I have felt no real connection. I, I'm with you. I think later in the end, them getting together made sense. Yeah. Okay. But the journey there, the character and himself, I thought, you know, he, I needed more from him. I like what Will does for, for Simmons. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. I like what Will does for Simmons down the road as a character. At yes. first, I actually didn't mind him in the episode once it kind of got established, but at first I was, because I was actually settling in for an all Simmons and no other people episode, although that seems weird that I would have been thinking that because we know she wants to go back, and it makes sense for a person that she would want to go Settle in for that Simmons. Get your popcorn ready. I mean, that's, Simmons time. But I mean, here's, here's what, I mean, the number one thing I liked about this is it's, you know, this is a, you know, this is a network TV show that isn't necessarily known for always taking the biggest risks. It's part of a big franchise, and I thought this was a risk-taking episode, and, and she did a fantastic job. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. I agree. I think the concept, the story itself, and Gem's performance, uh, I thought, fantastic. It's just, for me, it was just that character, I think, just kind of weighed it down a little bit. Well, let's talk a little bit about the planet, because when we first get there, you know, it's, uh, you know, six months earlier from from uh, where we started, yes? I'm sorry, can we talk about how awesome her phone is? Like, <laughs> Yeah, well, I was going to I was gonna that's, get to that. That's something Fitz, on my negatives please? of this episode. <laughs> well... Well, she she finally shows up at this planet, and I, I like what you were saying just about how the pl- it was kind of driving you crazy yeah. the look of this, and I think that means they did their job in this yes. episode because yeah. you really felt like you were on this sunless world with no with with nothing. She did she did dilly dally a little bit before looking for water. I thought <laughs> she was there for like seventy one hours before she decided to get on that yeah. water thing. Yeah. But then she finds this disgusting one, and we find out there's also life on this planet. One it of tries those snake to kill monsters, her. like in Star Wars. I thought that Dinoga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I thought that whole sequence was was a lot of fun too. Did it not look like the thing, the core, the umbilical cord that comes oh. out of yeah, like I a could baby? see that. Full of nutrients. Yeah, into it. Yeah. So it keeps the baby alive. Yeah. yeah. So she's been she's been on this planet for a while, and yes, the phone now seventy one hours. 
It was the first time I think we all looked at each other like, so the phone's still working. Yeah. I saw someone on, on Twitter compare it to her uh, Wilson. It would yes. be the Wilson for her. And I actually thought, and you said this, well, maybe you want to say what you thought was no. happening with the phone. What? Oh, I actually thought she... Uh... <laughs> I thought it had died because she was already talking to herself, yeah. and uh, I thought that she had like scratched in like a little uh, a little face, a little Fitz, and she's like Fitz, Fitz, can't you hear me? And then oh, that's she's, a pretty good job. <laughs> oh, that's you. terrible. Um, but oh, but okay, I thought see, it was gonna be like a little Wilson, Gemma, for her. That's me, Fitz. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and start talking back because to him. like I thought it was gonna be like that because Fitz also had a moment where he was crazy and he was seeing Gemma. Everywhere, yeah. Which no one really cleared that up, but um, <laughs> well, that was part of so his uh, like a little his psyche thing. Yeah, yeah. but that yeah. would have been interesting if they had done kind of a, a like the flip side to that with her, and she started seeing fits in her phone that wasn't working. Because that's what they did with her and Will at the dinner, wanting the wine together, and then um, it was kind of like a mirrored yeah. effect with her and and Fitz, and that's why she freaked out. <laughs> Well, after af <laughs> after a month alone, she falls in a hole. She falls into, I guess, Will's little trap that yeah. he has there, yeah. <laughs> and went in a cage, do some pull ups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, she's been in that. She, <laughs> she was she was in that cage for quite a while. Channel and in her, in yeah. the Hamilton. Yeah. We find out that Will doesn't necessarily believe she's real. <clears throat> is mm -hmm. the big is the big issue here, and yeah. he's, that's why he keeps saying like, "Oh, you're still here," and stuff like. That. And it isn't until she hits him that he figures it out. Although I don't know why it took that for him to figure it out. Yeah. I don't know if you have any. We didn't. Well, we didn't. We didn't even go down like the wormhole of Will's psychoactivity because I mean, a 14 years in a cave on a planet with no sun, and you're just surrounded by. And if I could like maybe go back to a certain thing is like we get to see that he's an astronaut and we see all of the stuff that he brought from 2001 was technology that bad because it looked like my first computer that only had Oregon Trail and, and Microsoft and like the word like the typing of a document that was well, awful technology well, I saw like Nokia 8260 in 2001 it was a little cell phone I mean I guess you would think that NASA would have better technology in <laughs> yeah. 2001. Yeah. But but I didn't, honestly, in all honesty, I remember, I mean, it does feel like since 2001, we have made such quick strides. Yeah. I mean, yeah. personally, for me in 2001, I was still very tech Well, you look illiterate. at like iPhones. I mean, iPhone didn't come out till like 2007. Yeah. yeah. You know, prior I mean, to that, I mean, those phones look, you know, prehistoric. True. Yeah. So I, I, bu I bought the antiquated 2001 technology. Well, I think it's at the bubble of amount of time we could believe that he was left alone and, not and w how technology would have been ready to make another advance. Yeah. See, and that's my problem, like you said, with um, Will, I've 14 years <clears throat> by yourself with mm -hmm. no one to talk to, no woman, nothing going on. Don't you think he'd have been a little bit more touched? Yeah. You know, there's some, there would have been something that would have made him interesting to me. And, and I you would like thought that maybe like that conversation where we were talking about wine and food, if he was been like, so was like Dave Matthews band still cool? Or like, do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like if he was asking questions about what he remembers well, versus what's going on now. Well, to be fair, that, that dinner is hours upon hours upon hours later yeah. in the 4,722 <laughs> hours of this episode. Um, I would say though, when we first meet Will, he is a little more, and maybe they could have done it done the transition a little more slowly or realistically but i think when we do meet him he is off like he's not engaging yeah. in conversation with her he is not really treating her yeah. like a human being well i think that was just because of the fact he didn't know who she was you know mm -hmm. he wanted to make sure that she was real and, and all that he, but. i mean if he's dealing with that on a like daily basis i think you're kind of have to try to keep your wits about you, especially when you know that there's something out there trying to kill you. And if you just like go off your, but it I'm seems surprised he didn't kill himself with his gun. Well, it seems to me though, I mean, there yeah. was what, like three other astronauts? That's really it in 14 yeah. years. He's not coming across that many people. Yeah. You know, I, I would think he'd be a little more cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs by this time. I don't know, it's just, he seemed really like too normal. I guess maybe, you know, he did say they were trained for this <clears throat> and he, you know, when you have this idea of just survive, I don't know, I'm making excuses no, for I Will, because I, I like mean, his name. <laughs> 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 oh, when Gemma's screaming out Will, I mean, I know. you know, <laughs> go I back know. and record that, that becomes your ringtone. Yeah. Will! <laughs> Will! Will! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Um, I mean, he did come prepared. He did seem to know the risks. Now, why was, though, NASA, because they seem to also have this idea that people had been sent back there before, and NASA didn't really know how to bring them Above back. Above his pay grade, so, yeah. he said. 
are they just sending people in the well if we do get them to come back we're going to have a real scoop science scoop <laughs> like i mean what i mean is that really what the whole thing is it's time travel, like, like right traveling, now. like over long peri- like distances. I think that's what they said in the, in the thing where he's. Yeah, explained. you're right. They did say that. Yeah, because you know, astronaut going up into space and like trying to conquer conquer space, and I think that was conquer like a, space, <laughs> conquer it. But they they didn't seem to really have an idea of even where it was sending them. No, and that's what they said. They were like, "Listen, there's a good chance that you might not come back. Are you willing to do it?" And they're like, "Yes, we're astronauts. We're scientists, except for." Except Will, Will. he's like, I'm not very scientist-y, <laughs> but I'll go. Well, the one thing that um, does happen when he, when when Simmons and Will get together is they kind of start to check themselves because Will is a doomsayer. He's like, it's all over. Glass We're stuck way here. Half empty. Yeah, understandably. Sure. But yes. she is the person who still has hope, and they're gonna check each other on this. And that's what I liked. I did like that dynamic that you know that she's like that yin and yang. I thought that worked really well. It just took a while to get to that point mm-hmm. in the episode. Yeah, and it, it it was a good dynamic. And also remember what Andrew had said to her the week before. Like, at what point did you lose hope? And I thought it was a nice uh, uh, callback to that. So the whole episode, I'm sitting there waiting. Like, when will she lose hope? When will she lose hope? So I thought that was a good setup. You know, I've completely forgot about that. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're definitely right. So I, I enjoyed that. And, of course, she wants to go into the no-fly zone that, that Will has dubbed it. This is the area where he believes this evil, this thing that operates, it seems, by infecting kind of your mind. Yeah. It's like uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's a it's a mental thing. It's like the smoke monster and lost. It's any of these things where you where it feeds on your psyche and then attacks you at your weakest point. We never really see... The, the enemy, besides like the sortest, the the astronaut. Well, when when it's coming after, bless you, when it's coming after um, uh, Gemma, it kind of looks like a, Assassin's Creed a little bit. It's got like long flowy yes. robes a little bit. So it's it's changing forms. It always comes in the form of the of the sandstorm. So um, I don't. You saw Assassin's Creed. I saw Harry Potter. The oh the the, uh, the Dementors. Uh, yeah. Dementors. Yeah. 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 So. You know, that that whole thing of the no fly zone of like what it attacks you on I, I, is a legit fear for this guy because it killed all of his buddies. Yeah. And it seems like it's killed a lot of other people, including all those British people that we saw at the beginning of two or three episodes ago. And it also seems the the reason you know it's coming or the, the clue you know it's coming seems to be the sandstorms yeah. that uh, are, are part of what it brings along with its evil and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but when she does go out, she decides to venture close to the no-fly zone. And speaking of the, the 19th century British guys, she finds a sword. She finds a old bottle of wine. She finds... Um, what are the what are the things called for to track the stars? Uh, yeah, I know. She- Star tracker. The star <laughs> gazer. <laughs> the shark dressed man's hand those, tool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she finds face. one of those tools, and this is what clues her in on we can figure things out using the stars. And this is when she does a Matt Damon, I'm gonna science the shit out of this yes. yeah. move. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna use my phone science. battery. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to charge up the computer, and we're going to track the stars. I've figured out... That little phone battery that's already been tested on a phone can now power a high-power computer. It is genius. She needs it long (laughs) enough to track the stars to figure out... We figure out... And I thought this was a nice little explanation, too, that the portals open up. It's kind of like the moon with tides here Mm -hmm. on Earth, Mm -hmm. which also kind of explains... I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, would this explain why it seemed to, with very little... With a, with very little frequency or in a very random way, the monolith would open up yeah. back on or liquefy back on Earth. Would that is that because it's matching up with the moons? That's the what I was there? wondering because I know we were all mm. wondering if like, uh, are you, is she inhuman or is there something else? There's a reason behind it. I'm wondering if that's all it really was. Yeah. I'm sure that's all it really was. I'm um, I'm like positive now that Simmons is not inhuman, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be really happy about that because yeah. people are worried. You guys were worried about it. Her, um, everybody becoming inhuman, and then no Just one can relate to Marvel's Agents of Inhuman. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. 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 Well, uh, you know, and before this episode, I'd written down actually the question of will we find out why it didn't 
open up when Fitz is banging on it. And I think it, that's definitely what it is. That's it's the, the it it's sense. the moons. Um, so that happens at about the three thousand. 20 hour mark <laughs> and yes the phone battery is working but they end up figuring out that it's going to open up in 18 days this yeah. portal mm-hmm. so they have to make this march to this canyon and of course when they get there it's a lot bigger than will had remembered my question was is his memory wrong did it get wider or was this i actually thought what it was going to be was some sort of mind game the evil was playing yeah, with yeah, him yeah. and actually it was very easy to get across, but they couldn't see it. But right. instead, yeah. I guess it was just as big as it was. Like Indiana Jones' Last Crusade. That's why I was thinking. thinking the same thing. Well, he did yeah. make the, uh, the comment saying that you know, he's making it hard for us to leave. Like maybe he's widening it, widening it. I don't know. Just yeah, mental. Either way, they decide to shoot what they were going to have like this it's grappling like a potato hook. cannon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it actually was pretty cool. He, yeah, they had come up with this kind of grappling hook type cannon and he ends up trying to shoot the bottle into the portal and it was so funny because we all collectively <laughs> we all went, oh, oh no <laughs> and we all know that's not how they get out yeah that's yeah. not how they get out we figured yeah we all knew that that wasn't how it was gonna get out but we yeah. were all so sad <laughs> when it didn't what, make it what was so important about this moment this was the moment she gave up hope yes yeah. yeah. mm. this was the moment that it all kind of fell apart for her and, and she then but up. then you know, they go back and she starts throwing stuff around and then he's like, yeah, and then Smooch Town, USA. <laughs> and that's when, you know, then we then it like kind of smash cuts and she's like, be safe out there. And they give like the boyfriend, girlfriend, smooch goodbye kind of thing. Like, uh oh, they're in love. Together. And now we know why she had to get back to the planet because whatever. And then <laughs> friend zone back to <laughs> Fitz. Poor back Fitz. in the friend zone. That look on his you know, face was just heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. He just He's got character, that guy. I don't think there's a lot of men that would accept that and go, All right, I'll I'll help you find your boyfriend and trending towards the scotch. I, I like it. Well, well here's the thing. <laughs> I tried. So yeah, Fitz she ends up getting back eventually to Fitz after these two are from in fact they <clears throat> it's they're about to have a romantic day. They figure yeah. out the sun rises every eighteen years for yeah. a few minutes. So we're gonna you know, we're gonna have the wine and we're gonna have this romantic day and she sees the flare. That's when we know that Fitz goes and brings her back in. Will kind of gets cut off by the sandstorm. But what else? What else? What else well, would Fitz? he didn't get cut off by the sandstorm. He was just like, "I'll hold back the yeah. death." Yeah. While you make it to safety. Yeah. Wow. Well. <laughs> Everybody's sacrificing what they want for, for Simmons. S- Simmons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what? I mean, here's the thing. When we cut back and she's telling Fitz the story, it is heartbreaking because we see yeah. the look on his face. And we also know that she really was looking forward to that date. It's not me. It's it's not you. It's me. <laughs> it's like because I met another man on a foreign planet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was the other takeaway for me. At the beginning of the episode, she is talking a lot about like, oh, we're gonna go on this date. We're gonna go to dinner. What's yeah. dinner? So she was really looking forward yeah. until this whole thing. Went. But what else would Fitz do? Of course, Fitz has to help her yeah. get this guy back. Because yeah. if he doesn't, then he's really lost her forever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. At least now. He's maybe. just trying to play the angles at this point. He's like, listen, if I help you get back your moon boyfriend, and then, <laughs> your you, moon co- boyfriend. And then you come back and you realize he's not that good a guy, and I'm still sitting around waiting at that table with a Pinot Noir, listen, maybe you'll come back I'm around. I'm convinced Fitzsimmons is not going to happen now. It's just Ever? so really? sad. I that? don't think that they're... I think it's done. I think it's done. I think he accepted it. He's like, Jesus. He like took a moment and he's like, all right, this is it. This is the moment. I want that conversation to be like, you know, when you're a girl breaks up with and you're like, but what if I was that guy? So it's like, what if Fitz was the guy on the planet? He's like, what if I was in a cave with you for five months? Would you like me in the same way? Yeah, we're just friends. (laughs) (laughs) Well, but do you really think that uh, Simmons and and Will are going to stay together? Yeah. This is a a love. No, it's 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 a love syndrome. Until he dies. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that it uh, thing line from well, Speed about thought- relationships that start with intense. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. It's not going to last. This is going to be sex based. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when Sandra Bullock and Speed, uh, sex based, that's fine. I'll take it. <laughs> but I mean, that's. I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think that can last. Because here's the thing let's say they get Will back. We saw how messed up Simmons was when she got back with yeah. the P. PTSD. How messed up is Will gonna yeah. be? I mean, he's gonna be on next level messed up. He was up. trained for this, though. Yeah. See, wow. that's the thing, though, because 
Again, I, like I know I've griped already that I felt like Will was pretty one-dimensional. We don't know much about him, but I'm wondering if that was also intentional. If maybe we intentionally, they, they held back that information. You know, maybe he is, there is another reason why he was there. You know, do we really know, like, if, because I know he, he said, well, th this death or whatever it was killed my guys. And he's like, well, do you believe me? Do we really know if that's, in fact, what happened or was this just a story he made up? I, I buy it. I believe that's what happened. And I actually felt bad for Will because the little epilogue to the episode is him there and the, in yeah. the sun the sun for the first time in 18 years on yeah. the planet I mean, first time he's been on the planet to yeah. see it you haven't seen it in 18 years and you're just like out there you're are you not smart enough that it's gonna like blind you and hurt like really really bad Huh? It's gonna be excruciating. The sun coming up, like not seeing. I it think for... you weather the storm there, Fenton. Yeah, <laughs> my, I, what? the freaking sun. I think they you're, said the sun was coming up. I think right? you're so happy to see the sun that you you you're take your chances. You're willing to burn your retinas. Yeah. Well, just don't look I mean, directly I, at it. I <laughs> guess I would be happy to, but you'd be happy. Like the way I mean, she was like I'd have a beach towel, about, some, like, some, oh, okay. some some Hawaiian tropic. I'd be out <laughs> and there. And it was the planet it. hadn't seen the sun in 18 years. He had seen the sun. 14 years ago yeah. when he was back on Earth. He's a little spoiled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. Um, so, I mean, things we didn't like about the episode, I think we're all on agreement about the cell phone thing is phone. a bit much. Yeah, I know they did mention, or she did mention something about Fitz. It's a, uh, you know, he... Fitz tampered with, with it. A little bit, but I mean... He's super smart. Still. I mean, it's a damn. super Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. phone that yeah. can last for 5,000 hours, 625 minutes. <laughs> they could have, maybe if they showed her conserving it, I would have bought it more, but she's like showing... Home yeah. movies on it <laughs> and stuff. So that that was the one thing. I kind of wish they went with the idea that she. I mean, they she could. Had they, a friend. Yeah, that it was <laughs> like. But they could have also done something, and obviously, I don't know how any of this would work. But they could have done something. I could use the parts from this to do this with the equipment you have, and it didn't have to be like the battery was right. still working for over. You know, 3,000 okay. hours. You know, my yeah. favorite line in this episode was, Your dinner, biatch! And I love that. <laughs> what, when she kills when, the snake? Yeah. When she kills uh, that. The sea monster? Oh, she's just eating and she's burping. It's like, oh, this is a good life. Yeah. I just I, loved it. I loved her victory over the monster, over the planet. I yeah. Loved it. No, I mean, she was badass in the episode. She did great. You know, that's a, that's the thing we say about a lot of the ca female characters on this show, but we haven't said it that much, because she's usually in a lab, and yeah, she's usually... Yeah. But, I mean, this was her episode to really shine. And I mean, she did not disappoint. Yeah. Yes. She did not. Solid. So, unless there's anything else we want to touch on, maybe we should get to some of these Twitter questions. Absolutely. Yeah. As you know, you could always tweet question at, at us, uh, hashtag Collider AOS. And here we go. What do we got today? This is from Danny Hernandez. What do you think the death monster is, and will Will be related to the Rosalind Price character? Okay, so, uh, Josh, I'm assuming you are you think the death monster is Shark-Dressed Man, but it is there, any, yeah. shark -dressed is there man. Any, anyone else that yeah. this could be? Uh, no, like I said before, I think it's, it's something in your psyche. I think it's your worst fear. I think it's something that you produce via the... the this planet driving you insane. Um, as far as Will being related to Rosalind, the only thing I can think of is that like ATCU in in a different form, like a different incantation of the mm -hmm. of the group, was part of a group that sent these astronauts to because they were they were talking about in the episode that that NASA had lost all the funding and they had this private group and that's who mm -hmm. sent them or paid for them to go over there, which is basically I'm guessing related to those British people in the cave and stuff. And so maybe Rosalind, maybe the ATCU had something to do with it or some sort of shady organization that has some sort of Rosalind relationship. That's the only thing I can think about. You don't really think, think it about. was S.H.I.E.L.D. that set him back? Because when she was like, oh, S.H.I.E.L.D., and he's like, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s real? So you don't think that that could have been uh, the maybe. private yeah. the group? Yeah, it's I think, possible. I think it could form be. of it. I think the ATCU could know something about this, something yeah. about this planet and something about what's going on. I mean, they are investigating in humans and things like this, so I wouldn't be shocked if they know something. I don't think she knows him directly. Yeah. Mike, do you have any thoughts on this one? No, I, I agree with you though, as far as like who this death monster is, I think maybe it is just something in your psyche. I think, again, I'm not entirely, maybe he was telling the truth, but I'm not entirely sold that what he told was in fact the truth. Maybe it is just kind of what you see and he w drove him to just madness. Maybe he killed his, his team. Maybe they pull him out of this thing and yeah, he is like a nut. Yeah. Maybe he maybe he turns out to be a villain. Maybe he is even the thing itself. Yeah. You don't know. Could it be, could yeah. be anything. 
Yeah, it's true. I mean, that I would be know. that would be a thing that gets Simmons and, and Fitz together if they pull him out and I it turns out Will guess. is I mean, not it, all he's Everything just seemed very it. convenient. I felt like there really just, there needed to be some, I was waiting for a twist, something really big to get me, and I didn't get that. But again, maybe this was withheld intentionally. I agree. I, 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 I kind of agree. I really want it to be Mistress Death. I don't think that that's what it's going to be. Um... The thing on the planet, I really, yeah. I really want it to be her. I just don't think that's gonna be it. Um, it could be like a dark elf. I don't know, but a I, dark like, elf. Yeah, I think, I, I think you're talking about the shark dressed man's listen, sister. <laughs> the <laughs> shark dressed woman. Like the planet could be the planet of the dark elves from you know Thor, Thor uh, yeah. d- the dark world, and it could be like a little nod towards uh, Thor Ragnarok, the whole planet. Oh, you never know. Um, yeah. So it could be like the planet of the dark elves. It looks very similar. It could be a dark elf. I don't know, but the thing is. They're like, they're taking a lot of liberties. Um, if with that the guy's been on there fourteen be years, if guys guys been on there fourteen years, and the only enemy he's seen is the, in the shape of that dust form, that gives me kind of pause to say I don't think it's those planets because he would have been attacked much. You sooner. don't know oh, yeah. because it's a huge planet. He hasn't been all over, right? He just mapped out. Well, like he a couldn't large have portion. gone the whole planet. Yeah, but. yeah, and she went on, but on like six, no, no, like four or five months without even seeing him. Yeah. No, four no. months. Five, like one month. Five days. Was she was one month? Yeah, she month. was one month before By the she, bamboo she saw him. Oh, I thought yeah. it was like I thought she was on a planet total about five months. Six, six months. months. Six months. But um, like I said, th- that could be anything with him. And if they bring back Will, who's not to say that this evil hasn't infected him and he yeah. comes back uh, a maniac? I don't think he's going to come back and go, Rosalind, I recognize you. No, I don't like, think obviously, that. Obviously, yeah. but, but I, I don't think that. I think he could come back and suddenly be like a crazy villain. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. Whatever. What do, what do we got next? <laughs> it's from Rachel Dominic. How do you think Fitz and Simmons are going to save Will, Mike? How are they going to save Will? Any um, thoughts on this? Well, he kind of already had it mapped out on his computer. You know, I mean, given like what Gemma was able to do on this planet, I have to assume that Shield has the technology to kind of figure something out. Which clearly, it looked like he had something already set, and it took him like two minutes to pull it up. So, yeah. do you think? I mean, is this going to be one of those cases where Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of... Because sometimes we talk about how they do things really quickly. Yeah. Like, they don't, like, stretch it out. It doesn't feel like enough of a struggle. Do you think this is going to be one of those cases I then? I think so. I think so. I mean, I think there's still ways to get in there. I mean, you look at, like, you know, I don't know, Loki and, like, the Avengers movies now. He's able to, like, go all over the place. They'll find a way. Yeah. And do, Aaron, do you think it's going to be quick? Yes. I think it's going to be, like, really quick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think they're going to buy mean, their time. I mean, which is fine, no. because I... I mean, they dedicated a whole damn episode, which was needed um, to like explain things. But still, there's so many questions. I think they really need to wrap it up. Do um, you think though it's the kind of thing where they keep opening up portals and hoping he just jumps on through, or do you think they're going to go back to the planet? I think they're going back. Okay, because she says we have to go back. She yeah. pulls the the lost line of we have to go back. I, he, and obviously, Fitz is going to go there begrudgingly to save the guy that's stealing his gal, but. Uh, he's going to go in order to, you know, make her happy because the last thing we need is her pouting around being like, well, could be somewhere on that planet and then she's missing her will. You know, yeah. we know, well, how, you know, you know what it's like. I right? know what it's like when you're without. <laughs> well, I deprive people of me sometimes. <laughs> That's crazy. OK, what uh, what do we have? One more here. This is from Zach's mind. Okay, So Zach's mind. I'm sorry. Real quick. He made a meme of shark dress man. <laughs> Yeah, let's. Oh, yeah. I think we have that. Oh, there I am. Yep. <laughs> I was laughing all week <laughs> over this thing. My I head had to listen. Shark guy. Yeah. I, I had to listen to the song several times. If any of the fans out there want to want to do some more memes or anything, I think the best the best shark dress man. I will make a T-shirt of, and I will wear it on this show. Uh, because obviously you, Shark Dress Man is the greatest superhero in the Marvel it's, Universe. <laughs> I love it so much. Thank you so much. That, it's that's, brought me joy. Yeah, that really that's good. what we were it's laughing joy, about Zach. before the episode. When, when you guys came in and we all looked like maniacs, yeah. uh, that's what we were laughing about. It's great. So thank so, you, what's Zach. What's question? Yeah, Zach, let's get this question here. Uh, in years to come, when people look back over Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., this episode will be in the top 10 list, on the top 10 list. Best examples of why it was so good. Aaron, what do you what do you think of that? I mean, I really like the look, the feel, the the music, the that they've never done it before. I really love the whole, um, you know, finding love on a desolate planet. And uh, as Rihanna says, finding love in a hopeless place. <laughs> you guys are welcome. <laughs> just, 
just along that th- this is the first episode that we've had that has been basically one character centric it is always going to stand out it's always going to be something they haven't done it yet yeah, yeah. it's always going to be an episode that the fans will remember and be able to easily reference maybe you can't remember was it in this episode that they got caught up with Ward or that episode, but you'll always remember the details that happened in this episode. And I think that's one of the reasons why it will uh, stand out. Yeah, for me, I mean, I just love Gemma in this episode. I have a newfound respect for the character. I mean, she was fantastic. She was what carried the episode for me. I, I, we were saying as well, there's some amazing standalone episodes and shows like Pine Barrens and Sopranos and The Fly in Breaking Bad. Uh, do I think those rank up with I mean, does this rank up with them? Probably not, but there is something to be said about the execution of a standalone episode, and uh, I I thought they nailed this for the most part. I mean, there was obviously some flaws with the phones and stuff, but I thought this was pretty well done. Yeah, overall, I, I think that that's the thing. From top to bottom, it was a unique episode. It was a really well done episode. And yeah, I do think this will stand when the book is written on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., this is an episode people will always be talking sure. about. Uh, so yeah. So I think, unless anyone's got anything else to say, I think that is it. Uh, Josh, why don't you start? Tell the people where they can find you. Uh, at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. You guys can see me on the Arrow Recap Show here on Collider, as well as The Walking Dead and my YouTube channel, Between the Sheets. So when you guys see me commenting on this show and you see Between the Sheets, that's me. And you can find me on Twitter at Mr. Michael Alexis and also on the Collider Arrow Recap Show with this guy over here. Find me at Agent Fenton on Twitter, and thanks again, Zach's Mind, uh, for doing that amazing theme. It, it brought joy. <laughs> yes, keep keep sending in those shark dressed man uh, <laughs> images. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the Real Will Link. Uh, we will see you here again next week. Thank you so much for watching. Until then.